Hi, everybody. My name is David Pearson, and I am the founder and CEO of Base Intelligence. Thanks for joining me today. This is the first video of a new series that I'm starting called Threat Hunting Thursdays. The goal of this would be roughly once a week, ideally on a Thursday, to have a live stream of threat hunting where either myself or someone on the team leads you through threat hunting with base, uh, the investigation aspect of base and uh, find some really interesting stuff. So if you think about what kind of goals we have here, the goal would be, first of all, to get people excited uh, with some really interesting things that we're able to find. Find interesting things that matter, if you will. Also, you know, I've been in the security space for 10 plus years professionally. I've had a lot of different experiences, which I'll mention a little bit more in a moment. Uh, and I think it would be really useful to share my experience and the processes that I've used to find and uh, elaborate on things with the community. Then, you know, if you are a founder yourself or no founders of companies, one thing that you will often find is when you when you're creating things you will have far less time to get into the weeds than you'd like and so this gives me an opportunity to set aside maybe 15 to 30 minutes every week where i really get to kind of do a deep dive and see what the system's finding and how that might be useful for other people and finally i mentioned that going forward this would be a live stream and the goal of that is to actually engage with users of base, whether uh, they are on the call at the time, uh, listening to the live stream and find interesting things that maybe I miss or following along, or simply they have ideas of things that they'd like me to explore or for the team to, to build. I think this would be a really great opportunity uh, to, to work closely with people because without users, nothing matters. So this one's a little bit different than the others, other than it being pre-recorded. I just wanted to give a little bit of a background on who I am and what is base, just to kind of set the stage. And then we'll get into uh, actual threat hunting with the platform and uh, do all the fun stuff. So if you are just looking for the fun stuff, skip a couple of minutes ahead and uh, if you're not, uh, I'd love to share a little bit about who I am and why I started BASE. So I've been, as I mentioned, in security uh, professionally for about 10 years now. And before that, I did a couple of degrees in the space, learned a lot of different things, had one that was super theoretical and one that was really, really hands-on. That awesome mix of skills and also knowledge and ways to think about problems really helped shape how I proceeded with my career. Spent some time at a national laboratory after that, and I did all sorts of really interesting things there. And about, gosh, almost eight years ago, was uh, recruited by a network detection and response startup and I went over there and started the threat research team and then ran it for about five years. And anybody who's worked at a small startup, I think I was employee 19, but I was the first person in the research group for a security company. Anybody who's started a company or been at an early company, you know that you don't just wear the hat that you're assigned. You're doing a lot of different things. So I really got an opportunity to learn what challenges are customers were facing, what things needed to be clear, better, etc. And it really helped to inform how I went forward with my career. One of the big things that I learned in that role was even if we found what looked like anomalous things or malicious things, there was a level of so what? 
that we needed to answer that was beyond just, hey, this is an alert or this matches some algorithm that we've developed. And so early on there, I focused on building out automation to explain what was going on. And it was something that was really important and users definitely appreciated. That explainability is something that with the advent of AI tools like ChatGPT, we're starting to see come back around. And I think that's one of the big reasons as to why it became such a big hit was it was conversational. It actually explained things. No, of course it hallucinates often, but it explained things in ways that humans could actually understand rather than just saying, hey, trust the algorithm. So that was something that I spent a couple of years on in my career uh, at that startup. And then later on, I decided to start my own company. Launched base about a year ago now, just a little less than a year ago. And in that time, I spent a lot of time figuring out what it was that I wanted to build, what it was that was important and where problems were in security that I thought were worthwhile to solve that would have a wide effect. And so I focused, at least now initially, we're focused on phishing intelligence and attack infrastructure around phishing. And you might say, oh, you know, if everybody has phishing information and, you know, short-lived and all this stuff. And there's a couple of things that I think are gaps in the security industry that are really, really problematic. And continuously, I'm finding these things and helping other people to understand why they're important. Two of them are, well, really three. I mentioned the explainability aspect, right? So we actually explain things in a meaningful way that a human can understand. That's useful in all sorts of different ways. But that's one thing that I think is really important instead of just a quote unquote black box, we actually explain why something happened and what you might want to do next. More important than that, though, is there's this concept, okay, you got a phishing portal, right? And it could be collecting credentials, it could be collecting um, payment card information, all sorts of different things. What happens when you hit submit? or next. A lot of people just on the surface might say, oh, well, it's, of course, it's just going to go and sit with that site and it's going to be locked down and the attacker will have the information, but we won't be able to learn anything. Not so much. So of course, you know, there often, there are times I should say when the information just goes back to that site, but significant amount of time the credentials or whatever information is collected is sent somewhere else. That can be compromised websites, that can be telegram bots, that can be malicious websites. All sorts of different things happen and nobody before base collected that information in an automated way. You had to go do manual an analysis and that's something that nobody really does. It's confusing. It, there are a lot of assumptions about how information is kept and where it goes. So we simply fixed that. We, we started identifying that automatically. And that is really compelling because now we have all these different attacks that are actually related that were previously just single individual portals that looked similar maybe, but weren't at all related, or maybe even didn't look similar. Maybe they're different kind of attacks completely, but they're all using the same infrastructure. That one's really important to us. So we automatically do that and we expose that information, full URL, you're able to really see what's going on. Another thing that we do that we think is really important is we have this concept of a way to look at what we call the essence of a site. Other people might call it a fuzzy hash. You might call it a skeleton of a site, etc. But essentially what we're getting at is the actual words on the site may 
be different. They may even be attacking different organizations or, or pretending to be different organizations, I should say. But what we're able to do is identify essentially the structure of the site and we can identify other similar structures and we can share that in a way essentially like a hash that other people can use in their environments to identify stuff. So we, we have that and now we're able to add information on top of that. Like this is an indicator of a particular attack. It's really interesting stuff. And then on top of that, we're starting to layer on campaign information. Really recommend if you're interested in digging into that, please ask us questions at hello at base.io, B-A-Y-S-E dot I-O, or simply engage with me on any of the social media platforms that we use. Ultimately, the direction that we're taking things is to build a living threat intelligence report instead of something that just happened at one point in time and then kind of disappeared, was lost in the ether, or somebody reported four months later when the operation was over and everybody who was affected would have already been affected. And they said, ha, I told you so. We had this information if only used our platform. We don't believe in looking backward so much. We want to be proactive. We want to prevent. We want to detect at the very earliest stage. Okay, so I said a lot of things. Let's uh, let's just jump into the platform and actually do stuff because it would be way more exciting to kind of show you different things. All right. So now we are in base. And today for hunting, I wanted to start with something that I think is really, really interesting. Uh, so there's the concept of open directories. And if you think about what they are, they're essentially the a site is set up, uh, but it doesn't have a homepage or doesn't have a particular page at some level of depth. And so you get the directory listing of the content on that page. It's uh, one of the things that are base uh, observables functionality, which if you go to our resources and go to blog, you'll have an intro to base observables. You can learn all about it. But anyway, this is one of the things that we're able to use to identify something similar over and over again. And there's some really interesting stuff here. So let's look at some examples here. So these are recently analyzed ones that are going that have gone through base and you're going to find all sorts of really interesting ones. So we can pick on a couple of them just to kind of dig in a little bit here. Let's Let's pick this one just to start. All right, so what we see here, we get the screenshot and we see, hey, we got somebody's Google uh, verification identifier and then we have a contact support. So one of the things that BASE does is when we see an open directory, we'll go and do an automatic analysis of it and uh, try to automatically crawl the different things that are in there. And so what we should see is the interpretation of this particular page. So let's see if it was up. So let's pick this one. Okay, so that one looks like it might not have been up. I know something similar happened. Yeah, let's look at this one. We, we saw one similarly a couple of days ago. So this is a pretty good indicator if you look at this, you can see, ah, clear as day, this is a Facebook uh, business help center scam. So we can look at like, what does, what does base tell us about this? We saw that uh, information was collected and in this case it was sent just to uh, some void function within there. So not the most useful uh, follow on activity there. But now we can go and pivot a little bit and see, have we seen these elsewhere? So these are the observables that I mentioned. So this is a little bit of detail about those, but we can go ahead and jump into maybe the structural ID, which is that essence of a site example. In this case, we only see uh, just one in the last week and maybe, uh, yeah, about a week ago. So just before this uh, happened, we would have seen uh, another one just missed that one. 
but let's see if we have any others. So we have links on the site we can look at. And so these may or may not be the most useful. This is essentially looking at all the links and identifying, hey, what else have we seen that has the same set of links? We've got 239 from June through August. Again, looks like there are some that are farther back, but there is only one in the last week that we've seen. So we're not able to see anything. Yeah, no more no more results in the last week. One of the things that we're continuing to, to build out is a search investigation function, functionality to go deeper to find other examples of this going farther back. So for, for users of the platform who have registered, you'll be able to search back uh, one week, two week, four weeks, those kinds of things. All right, so kind of a dead end there, but we, we identified something that was clearly interesting that uh, would be useful to dig deeper. Let's go back to that observable ID. So I want to look at some of these other ones. Let's see what this one looks like. SECN2.serveftp.net. All right, so this one we've got z.php. And we can look at what we've got in here. So we can go ahead and pivot on the destination. And let's see if this was crawled any other times. It looks like this one was not yet crawled again. Of course, we could actually take it and do it ourselves. Was it z.php? Let's double check that. Yep, z.php. All right, so let's go ahead and submit that. See if we have anything else that we can learn here. So this is behind the scenes doing a whole bunch of analysis. It's running a bunch of tests, looking for IOCs, looking for uh, internal IOCs, <laughs> looking to see what's going on. It looks like this one is really interesting. It redirected us to some wacky site. And of course, it's a CAPTCHA. So we weren't able to learn anything about the uh, underlying infra this time, but we identified that it's a CAPTCHA. And we can see, have we seen this site elsewhere? So let's look for that. It looks like this is a new site. So that's interesting. I'd bet money on that being interesting. Yeah, it looks like we aren't able to learn too much more about that one right now, but I bet we could learn more with a little bit of effort. Let's come back here and I want to go to one that I found last night that I found to be really interesting and actually opened up a campaign of a whole bunch of different things. So we can see there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that's interesting, but I want to pick on one. It's a little bit farther back. Just see the phrase FCU being repeated over and over again, Federal Credit Union or something like that. There's another one of those verifies. Let's come back to the top. That's another interesting one that I need to go back and look at, but this is the one that's really super interesting. So it's called rat-sep-02.click. So let's look at that. And I'm going to clear out a couple of these tabs. We don't need them anymore. All right, so this one, if we zoom in on that, we see S-E-P-A-H. And let's see what the analysis was of that. So we can dig into it. So we first saw it yesterday, August 16th. And we can look at what are other analyses of the things that are underneath that. And you can see, just quickly looking at this, that there's some interesting stuff. So this is the time that it was analyzed, what the URL that was submitted, and then what we finally visited and what we think of it. So first one you can see is 
uh, SEPA logs, Telegram error logger, 2023, 0808. Let's see, login, national, send national code, util, Telegram, error logger, and then more logs, send card data. Clear as day, this is bad. Uh, let's look at one of these logs. So this is just raw log.txt that was captured here. And it's really interesting. So you can see here, we see text is new user installed rat. We got an IP address and a tag, and then we have full uh, directory information about this. So we have uh, pub HTML, Saderat, sender, telegram.php, and then we see a little bit later HTTPS uh, API.tel, which is just short for telegram. It seems as though they're shortening it, so maybe we can't capture the whole thing. But we see very clear as day, uh, we see some IP addresses that were associated with this, and it looks like it might be... Um, well, we, we don't see it in here, but from a different example that I can dig into quickly, we'll see that it's actually associated with an SMS attack. So let's go back and look at a little bit more detail there. So we've got these, and actually, let's see. This might be how we can pivot. So we got a structural ID here, observable, that might be, nope, that's not the ticket. That's not the one that we want. So that one, that that observable isn't super, super helpful, but there are uh, quite a few other ones that are useful here. So let's look for, trying to remember which one was the smoking gun here. I can't recall it off the top of my head. So let's just go back to here where I know I can find it. All right, so we had rat sep 02click Let's come back up here, go back one more page. And we can look at another one. So we see this ns2 and ns1 sadhomraha.site and sadhomraha.store. So let's pick one of them. And I know I'm butchering it, and I know it's uh, either Farsi or Arabic. Um, I'll tell you why I know that in a minute, but we see this time we've got Melat. And if we come down here and we look at the details about this destination, again, we see right around the same time as the other one. Let's see if it's actually very tightly. All right, so this was 9.12.52, and this one was uh, about, about nine hours earlier we first saw it. But what we see here is sign up, uh, send data, telegram.php, util, error logger, and yep, we've got some logs again. So we can see what they look like. And again, we see this kind of behavior that we uh, saw just a minute ago. And so first you might say, oh, you know, what the heck, what was that SEPA? or what is the Melat, etc. So in this case, we actually see that in the message or in whatever this log is, we see from Bank Melat. So we can just do a quick Google and find out Bank Melat is an Iranian bank. And so that tells us uh, some pretty useful things. Maybe uh, a group of users who might be targeted by this. And again, it's banking, right? So are we are we doing financial crime? Is that what is going on here? We're trying to uh, steal information, money uh, from, from the users. And the other thing that I mentioned a little bit ago was we were able to identify that this was associated with a uh, an SMS or a mobile attack. Here we see new SMS. So that's what we're able to uh, capture that information. The last thing that I wanted to highlight today, because we can go in a million directions and there's so much more to dig into, but the last thing that I wanted to highlight today was we see the send API request from this telegram.php and we see HTTPS API.tel, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's a well-known, well-used 
uh, functionality of uh, attackers uh, to use api.telegram.org. So, oh, that's not what I want. I want it's a destination. So, so we do this and we find out, hey, this has actually been used quite a bit. It was first searched around February of this year. That just happens to be when we turned this functionality on. Base is a pretty new platform. That's about when we launched. And we can see where has this been seen in the last week. You're going to find a lot of malicious stuff here. So we've got all sorts of different things in here. And so let's let's see. Here's an example. Just by name, this is Yahoo. It's a known phishing site. This is actually one of those here to, to kind of highlight the campaign functionality. So it matched a known IOC associated with our fake Yahoo login portal targeting Yahoo. And here's the whole Telegram information, including the bot ID and the chat and the information that was collected. If you want to see what that actual campaign looks like, so here's that known IOC. We tell you that it matched this 5895, which should match our observable right up here. Yep, 5895. And what we're able to do then is pivot on that observable. So we'll go to structural ID 5895, see the details on it, and we'll see how many times have we seen it. May 30th, 30th was when we first saw that. That happens to correspond with when we turned on the observables functionality, so it's probably been around for quite some time before that. But we've seen it 1,700 times since then. And this is associated with an IOC called Fake Yahoo Login Portal, which we captured in the description there a moment ago. And we can see additional information about this. We, we tell you right here, information is generally stolen via the Telegram bot. This is the starting point of what we're calling the living threat intelligence report. So this is a particular indicator, in this case, uh, an indicator of compromise that's more durable than just say one phishing portal domain name. And what we do here is we can roll these indicators up. And if there was additional information like a campaign, we can roll it up into that. So in this case, we have an unknown campaign, but let's just quickly pivot to what campaigns look like. So we have a campaign tracker. And so this captures campaigns that we're aware of that are actively happening that would be interesting to dig into. So we're able to, in this case, just as an example, take 60, nearly 69,000 uh, individual submissions of attacks against Microsoft, where there were 230 plus 176, so 400 different domains or do destinations, but probably domains in this case, just in the last day that we saw. We can roll that up into one small piece of information. So we've got a campaign and we've got three indicators. These three indicators identify that entire set of attacks. And this attack has actually gone back for three and a half years, which is crazy. But we were able to identify the entire thing, both previous and going forward with just these three indicators. All right, so now we are finished with our first Threat Hunt Thursdays. Thanks for joining. I hope you learned something, found some interesting things, and maybe found some ways that you might want to start poking into base on your own. Super easy to get uh, started. Just go ahead and go to HTTPS uh, base.io and then go to uh, register or login, top right corner, and you'll be able to go ahead and create a free account and be able to do anything that we did in this video. Um, there's so much more that we'll be exploring as we go on and so much more functionality that we'll be building as we continue to go towards our threat, uh, living threat intelligence platform that we're building. And I, I really, really hope that this video was useful to you. Uh, if you have feedback on anything that you'd like to see or you're frustrated with ums and ahs or have any things that you really want, 
uh, us to dig into, whether it's in one of these Threat Hunting Thursdays or in something else, please reach out. You can easily find me on LinkedIn and Twitter slash X. Or if you want to reach out to the team, you can go to hello at base.io, email us there, and we'll be sure to get back to you. And of course, if you're actually interested in all of the ways that BASE can be useful in your organization, whether it's through the investigation platform or our 6,000 plus uh, destinations identified as phishing per day, please reach out. We're happy to get you set up with a trial and understand how we can support you with our platform. All right. Thanks so much for your time. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, please do share with other people. Cheers.